This is how powerful Facebook advertising has become and how important Facebook ads are. I'm also going to show you how Donald Trump used data, Facebook ads and clever marketing to become president of the United States of America. If you want anyone to blame for Donald Trump being the president and this isn't a political video, I'm not going to get into the morality or the rights or wrongs of it. I'm just going to explain that you should be blaming Mark Zuckerberg and the data companies on Facebook Facebook for Trump being elected instead of Trump himself maybe. Hey Funnel Builders, Mike Killen here from Sell Your Service. If you're a funnel builder, you should subscribe because I produce new videos every single week to help funnel builders like you attract more clients, increase your income and sell more funnels. I've got some free training in the description below on how to build a $100,000 marketing funnel with WordPress, where I teach you the themes, plugins and automation that you need to build and sell funnels using WordPress. So the big problem that presidential campaign electives face, and this is true of everyone, this is true in the UK, in France, Germany, Europe, South America, Africa, the rest of the world, the way we make decisions is changing every few years. Whoever wins either elections or votes or sales, if you're a business, does so because they adopt the latest communication method. It always staggers me when I see businesses still using radio advertising or print advertising in local newspapers in order to get their business out there when there are far more effective methods there are cheaper methods and if you follow the plan that i'm going to show you that donald trump and his marketing team and russia used i'm going to show you how easy it is to actually gain massive momentum within a relatively small field there's a huge misconception that people vote with facts or logic and again this is not a political video i'm just kind of explaining the way that I saw the election pan out. It's also interesting because we can compare it with something else that kind of happened that year, which was the Brexit vote. So uh, England or the UK leaving um, Europe. And a lot of it was down to people thinking that people who make a vote are going to vote with logic or facts or reason. And that's just not the case. People vote and people make all their decisions based on emotion. Even when we're buying things and when we think we're buying something for a logical reason, for example, we had to get a new boiler put in just before Christmas, people think that, oh, if I give them facts and logical information and model numbers and the way that the gas pipes and stuff is going to work, that's what's going to convince them to buy from me. But in actual fact, what happens when people have to make any decision is they typically go with their gut. And if anything, the more facts that people are overloaded with, they actually are less likely to make a decision. It's called analysis paralysis. And Donald Trump knew this. In fact, let's argue that Donald Trump and his marketing team and the financial backing that he had from Russia knew this, which is why he became president. Trump essentially knew that no votes, so people refusing to vote, were actually as good as voting for him. The problem is that Hillary Clinton, and again, this isn't political aside from however you feel about the two parties, Hillary Clinton's campaign team and her marketing team didn't adopt the same data-based and Facebook advertising-based strategies that Donald Trump and his team used. They tried to use traditional advertising and media methods to engage with their audience, when actually what they should have been doing is following Trump's lead and using a lot of his data and marketing. It's either because his marketing team were better. I would argue that the reason Donald Trump had this at his disposal is because obviously he runs a lot of businesses, so he has a lot of marketing teams working under him. He also worked with businesses like Cambridge Analytica who knew that if they were to get in front of the right audience, it's not enough to just show one advert. They can actually split that ad between multiple different audiences. So let's go back to 1924. Calvin Coolidge won his presidential debate over Davies, I think it was. John Davis, sorry. Because Coolidge used radio. They had a presidential debate and before that, we can't even think of it like this, but before that, presidential debates were pretty much entirely put in print media, so in newspapers and flyers and letters. It was never, ever, ever brought into people's homes. And for the first time in history, the presidential debates and the campaigns and the advert could be beamed directly into people's homes via the radio. Admittedly, people who owned radios, it was a relatively small proportion, but it was the first time in history that the presidential election was now directly into your home. If we then look at the uh, uh, second example, John F. Kennedy was good looking, he was handsome, he was good on TV, and that's what won him his election. Regardless of whether he was the right president for the job or not, when they had the 
presidential election. In 1960, they had a TV debate. JFK knew that if he could get in front of the audiences and have people see him and trust in him, again, entirely emotional, it had nothing to do with logic or facts or reason, it made him look better. Nixon was sweating, he didn't understand kind of the, the point of being on TV and he kind of struggled to comprehend what it looked like and how it translated. He was used to doing it on radio, he was used to doing it on print, so he carried like a napkin around with him and he was constantly dabbing his forehead because of the studio lights were so hot, but it made him look like he was sweating, and which he was of course, but it made it look like he was struggling and, and uh, thinking of all the kind of ways that this debate was going wrong. It made him look bad, whereas JFK constantly smiled, just had this great hair, great cut suit, and looked like a TV star. Let's look at another example, even in the UK, when during Elizabeth II's coronation, Philip, her husband, he said that this needs to be broadcast on TV because it should be the people's coronation. And this was the first time in history that a queen, a monarch, had been crowned in public, so to speak. It was being beamed directly into people's TVs and their homes and we were connecting with it. And again, regardless of your feelings about the royal family, they have adopted every single method of new communication in order to bring that to the people because they know that the, the, the PR and the public relations that you can get from being in people's TVs and in their radios and in their podcasts is so vital. So that's another great example. The last example I want to give before diving into Trump's version is Barack Obama adopting social media to win his presidential campaign. Again, Joe Biden and for the millionth time, I, I am not making this a political video, Joe Biden focused really heavily on a lot of facts and logic and reason, as did Barack Obama. But what Barack Obama did is set up a Twitter account. So now, not only would you have the presidential information being beamed into your home and where you live and work, but also you could now tweet a presidential candidate. You can actually reach out to them outside of the usual communication channels, which completely revolutionized how people interact with their presidential nominees. And this is what brings us onto Trump. Trump yet used social media, but biggest of all, Trump used data. Trump had marketers like Cambridge Analytica obviously have a lot of financial backing from Russia. It's not even as much as a conspiracy theory to say that anymore, but Trump knew that you'll either vote for him as Trump or Hillary. He knew that there wasn't much sway between them. So what he realized is that he could split, and I say he, I wouldn't be surprised if Donald Trump didn't ever look at any of these adverts. By the way, there's over 4,000 different messages and adverts just for Donald Trump and his page to do with his presidency. He's the biggest spender on, adverta on advertising on Facebook. That's actually not true. He's the second biggest spender on Facebook advertising behind Facebook. Facebook is Facebook's own biggest advertising customer, bizarrely, but President Trump is the second largest spender outside of Facebook to spend money on Facebook ads. And what he realized is that where a TV station would show a TV uh, ad to a particular set, assuming those four people were looking at the TV, that's obviously not taking into account the differences between the various members of the family. It also doesn't really take into account you know, regions, because although we advertise to a specific area, and I know in the States kind of advertising works slightly differently to where we are in the UK and Europe and the rest of the world. But if you're running an advert and you know that it's going to go into 250,000 homes, it's an extremely expensive operation. Facebook advertising cuts that by hundreds, hundreds. Instead of spending, you know, thousands of dollars per advert, you're now spending like three or four cents per advert. And this is where it gets crazy. Donald Trump would change his advertising strategies based on who he was showing it to. If you were already relatively pro-Trump, and again, he could use data or his team could use data to see your income, your job, who you like, all the different types of pages you like, the activity you have on your page, the activity you have on all your cookies and your browsers, you're, he knows you're pretty likely to vote for something like Trump, so he'll put pro-Trump messages. If he knows that you are likely to vote for Hillary, He'll put anti-Hillary Clinton messages to that. The people who are in the middle, like the swing voters, he would change the advertising message depending on the preferences that they have displayed. And this is where it gets so incredible. You now can show individual messages to people, not just on your street, not just in your neighborhood, but now people in your home would get different advertising messages based on their preferences, either getting you to vote for Trump, not vote for Hillary, or more importantly, not voting at all. 
And that's why Trump managed to win despite having the lowest voter turnout in history. And it's all because he used data. If this video was useful, or if you found it interesting, a like and a share would be really appreciated. I'd love your comments down below. Like I said, this isn't a political video. I just want to talk about how Trump used data and advertising and Facebook to win a US presidential election, which is fucking mental when you think about it. It also shows that the president that adopts the latest form of communication is more likely to win. It's got nothing to do with who's the best candidate. It's got nothing to do with who has the best facts or the most logical arguments. It's all to do with emotion and who uses that communication channel. Thanks very much guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you on the next video. I've got some free training in the description below on how to build a $100,000 marketing funnel with WordPress, where I teach you the themes, plugins, and automation that you need to build and sell funnels using WordPress. Thanks for watching, guys. I've got a couple of videos here which you might be interested in talking about funnel related topics like how to price a marketing funnel and how to find your first marketing funnel customer. In the meantime, if this video was useful, hit that like button. Make sure to leave me a comment and subscribe if you are a funnel builder. I'll see you on the next video. Keep building those funnels.